a lot of people might be looking for a job now, and you might be wondering, is there a way to find job quickly and effectively? This is why we decided to put together this video to help you navigate through the job search process and help you find and secure the job quickly. In this video, we'll cover most important topics related to job search. We will look at the five stages of job search. We will cover strategies to find job and get hired. We will look at how to find job using professional networking, typical communications you would need to do as employer, and strategies to find job leads. Once you watch this video from the beginning to end, you will have everything you need to find and secure job quickly. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career I worked as a consultant helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. There are typically five important phases in the job search process. In the first phase, you start by establishing your career objective. Establishing career objective is necessary so you can identify the target jobs. And you do this based on the skills, experiences, market demand, and personal aspirations. At the end of this phase, you would need to have a complete resume ready, as well as template for the cover letter for the target position. And the other strategic outcome of this phase is knowing what is your specialization and what is the value that you can bring to the employers. During phase two of the job search process, you would need to identify open positions in your area and apply. Based on the career objectives and the target jobs that you've identified in phase one, you can do a search in phase two using your personal connections and or job postings to find what's available in your area. There are multiple different ways to look for the job, but the most common ones are asking former colleagues for the openings in their organizations, looking at online job postings, and then also looking at local advertisements. Once you've identified target jobs, you would need to apply by completing job application and submitting the resume and cover letter that you prepared in phase one. If your skills and experiences are competitive, and might be of interest for potential employers, you might go through initial job screening. You typically will receive an email or phone call from the potential employer asking you for some additional info. If employer receives a lot of submissions, they use technological filtering and identify the resumes based on the keywords. So it is very important to have the right set of keywords based on the job you're applying for as part of your resume, cover letter, and job application. But since you passed this phase and received the phone call and email from the potential employer, you might have a conversation with human resource representative. Sometime, hiring manager also might be part of this discussion. In addition, very frequently, employer would want to ensure that you in fact possess all the skills and qualifications that you listed in your resume, and they might ask you to complete an assessment test. If you pass phase three of the hiring process, you will be eligible for the interview. Even though most interactions in phase three were remote in the past, typically in the past, interviews were face to face. But now a lot of interviews are also remote using technology like Zoom or other remote collaboration technologies. So you would need to have access to device with the camera to make sure that you successfully pass this phase. Interview could be a conversation with the group of people or just one person. Sometimes, interview is a very formal process where every candidate is asked a specific number of questions and all the same questions are presented to all the candidates. But a lot of times, interview is very informal where a group of people just trying to have a conversation and asks you questions about your skills, soft skills, professionalism, and also evaluates your dress code and your behavior during the interview. Success in the interview is dependent upon a lot of factors and this is probably one of the most important phases of the hiring process. Because you possess exceptional 
and high demand skills and experiences and presented yourself very well during the interview, you go to the phase five of the job search, which is the job offer. In this phase, typically you receive a job offer from employer, which most of the time consists of your salary information and benefits. A lot of times, job offer might be a subject to background verification as well as negotiation and finalization. Typically, hiring manager is a decision maker in this process, and you receive job offer packet as an email with all related information attached as PDF files. There are typically five key steps to find job online and get hired. In the first step, you need to define where you're going to be looking and who are the employers that are hiring in your area. In this step, you also need to establish career objectives and identify target jobs. Basically, you would need to answer the question, why somebody would want to hire you? What kind of market skills do you have that can deliver value to potential employers? You would need to objectively look at your skills, experiences, and market demand in your area, as well as your personal aspirations. Once you have answered these questions, you would need to prepare a resume and cover letter for the specific position and start applying. In the step two of typical hiring process, you would need to find organizations that are hiring and apply for a job. There are multiple different ways to find companies that are currently hiring. You can use your personal connections, use networking, use job posting in your areas to find and apply for jobs. One of the best ways to identify companies that are currently hiring are listed here. You can tap into former colleagues, you can use online job postings, and you can use local job postings in the newspapers or online boards. Once you've identified the job that you can qualify for, you would need to submit your resume and cover letter, as well as complete employment application for that position. If hiring organization is interested in your qualifications and would like to consider you for this position, we will navigate to step three, which is pass initial screening. In this step, you would need to respond to the email from prospective employers, go through initial phone interview, and answer any questions they might have. Keep in mind that in this step, if companies receive a lot of applications, they might consider bringing in artificial intelligence technology to filter the candidates based on the keywords. Artificial intelligence engine will only keep and consider resumes that contain particular keywords required for the position. This is very typical, especially in IT industry, where companies are only interested to bring in candidates with the particular technology skills. This is why it is so important to list key skills and key technologies that you used when applying for the particular position. Assuming that you pass the technological filtering that companies might employ, you will go to the phase where you will be talking to HR representative that will ask you questions about your resume and employment history. HR manager might be asking for your gaps in employment history, as well as looking for the particular aspirations that you have to make sure that you're a good fit for the particular job. You might also be asked to complete assessment test as part of this phase. If you are successful and pass step three of the hiring process, you will navigate to the step four, where you would need to go through the interview process. Historically, interviews were conducted as face-to-face, -face, but due to COVID-19, remote and Zoom or other remote technology interviews are very popular and widely used by a lot of organizations today. Typically, the interview is led by a hiring manager, and you have opportunity to meet your future colleagues as well, which might be part of the interview process. To pass this phase of the hiring process, it is very important to focus on the four key things your skills and experiences that you bring to the table. You need to convince the hiring manager and your future colleagues that you are the best candidate and you would be a quick starter to help them do what they're looking to do. You also need to demonstrate soft skills that are extremely important in today's environment, as well as focus on professionalism and dress code during the interview. Keep in mind that even if you're doing Zoom or other remote technology interview, you still need to look professional on the camera and follow the interview dress code. If you pass this phase, you typically will be greeted with the job offer. And this is the last phase in the employment hiring process 
where you will have opportunity to review and negotiate your job offer as well as get hired. Typically, job offer is presented with your salary and benefits, but might be subject to background check before employer finalizes and gives you the job. As part of this phase, it is very important to stay connected with prospective employer. Typically, hiring decision is hiring manager's decision. And this is why it's so important to establish good rapport with hiring manager during the interview process. You may need to respond to the letter of offer. You may need to do negotiations and answer any questions employer might have as part of finalization for the employment process. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. Very frequently, when you're looking for the job, you would like to explore your professional and personal connections in your network to find leads, understand the business need, and find available openings to get hired. This brings us to a very important question. What is job search networking? Since this is such an important concept in employment job search, let's define what job search networking is. And just like personal networking, job search networking is building relationships with other people. You build these relationships by making connections, sharing information, and asking questions to better understand about the business need. There are three main goals in the job search networking. The main goal is to build the relationship with a person. Second goal is to understand the business need. And the third goal is to share how you can help solve this business problem by using your skills and experiences. Keep in mind that job search networking is completely volunteer interaction on the both parties. It is not a sales pitch of how you can help and not a call of desperation sharing that you are desperate to find the job at the moment. You should always give another party the room and opportunity to say no, I'm not interested. But you should explore all the opportunities and share in professional manner how you can help. Nobody likes to deal with pushy salespeople. And when doing professional networking, you should always keep in mind that another party is doing you a big favor by listening to you and trying to help. And you should always give them the room to make their own decisions. It is always very important to keep in mind that networking is only one of many ways to find job leads. Job search networking is listed here as item number four, but there are seven additional items in addition to job networking, how you can search for the jobs. There are many circumstances when job search networking is effective, but there are also some situation when it is not. Let's look at the three main avenues when using job search networking is the most effective. You have much higher chances of getting hired when you have established personal and professional connections with hiring manager. And the main reason for that is because typically we as people conduct business with others that we know and like. Another reason why job search networking is so effective because every job posting is tend to draw a lot of applicants and a lot of submissions of resumes and cover letters. A lot of times, companies are required to do job posting, but hiring managers would like to give preference to people that they know, and very often give preference to people in their personal and professional networks, as well as employee referrals. And last but not least benefit of job search networking is related to the fact that a lot of job postings are not advertised. Hiring managers know that they have a business need and they need somebody to help solve this business need. But they don't want to go through the formal process of posting the job opening and then go through the hiring process. A lot of times, they don't have time and energy to do all of this, and they tend to postpone the decision. But if they can find somebody through their trusted network, they will definitely give preference to this candidate. There are many different ways how you can do an effective job search networking. For example, you can send an email message to decision makers that are currently looking for the people with skills similar to yours. It is very important to follow certain professional format when writing these emails, especially when writing to the people that you do not know. You should consider various different technological options to reach out to your network. Some of the smart ones, if you have a cell phone number of your colleagues, you might consider texting them in addition to emailing or doing the phone call. When reaching out to other people, you want to make sure that you're building professional relationships. You are being respectful in this communication. When you only communicate relevant information, down to the point, 
and keep their perspective and their position in mind. You also show your respect when you follow certain professional standards when writing this communication. When you're reaching out to another person, you want to make sure that you can make yourself available. In case hiring manager or decision maker will reach out back to you and would want to have a phone call or quick chat. Typically, job search networking happens in the stage two. You can learn about job search opportunities in any stage of the job search process listed here. But you need this information the most in stage two, when you're trying to find companies that are hiring. In this phase, you use your professional connections and other job postings to find the opening and apply for a job. As you can see, reaching out to former colleagues is just one of the ways to find about job openings, and you should always keep other options in mind. It is also very important to keep in mind the job search process is the competition. You have other candidates applying for the similar role and searching for the jobs in your area. So you should always attempt to improve. And the best way to improve might be to recognize what's happening and balance by improving your presentation skills and job skills related to the position. It is also very important to be persistent and follow up on the previously submitted request. One of the ways to do it might be to use a calendar application or task management application. You can create a note for yourself in the calendar and set yourself a reminder. This way, you will never miss the follow-up activity. And if you connect your email application to your phone, you will get reminded on your phone as well. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. To be effective and successful in your job search process, you typically need to follow certain business communication protocol during your job search. There are five key phases in the job search process. Establishing career objective, identifying open positions and applying, completing initial job screening by employer, going through the interview process, and getting and negotiating job offer. And for each one of these phases, there are certain expectations of what needs to be completed to be successful. Successful completion of phase one requires you professional, competitive resume as well as the cover letter specific for the position. Depending upon how you're applying for, you also may need to think of the text for the email of interest that you might be sending indicating your interest in a particular position. In phase two, you need to find companies that are hiring in your target job area. Once you found and identified the companies, you would need to complete job application and attach resume and cover letter. Typically, attachments you include to job application only accepted as PDF files or Word DOCX files. Recently, some companies also asking you to include your LinkedIn profile information as well. In phase three, employers are typically filtering through all the submissions that they have received and identify the best candidate for the position. If they select you as prospective candidate, you might receive initial communication from employer, which might come as an email or phone call, and you need to be able to provide professional responses back to the employer to make sure that you do not disqualify yourself and, in fact, increase your chances to succeeding in the interview process. Even though initial screening can be done via email, most of the time it's a live conversation, either using Zoom technology or just regular conversation on the phone. If you pass the stage three of the hiring process, you navigate to stage four, where you need to go through the interview process. Due to pandemic, most of the interviews are remote using Zoom or other similar technology. After the interview, you may need to write a follow-up business communication in the form of thank you note or follow-up note. If you are successful during stage four, you go to the stage five, where you might receive a job offer from employer. This is probably the most exciting phase of the employment process. And during this phase, you may need to get involved in additional business communication like accepting the offer, rejecting the offer, or negotiating the offer. Typically, your professional business interactions during the employment process consist of seven important items. Resume and cover letter, LinkedIn profile, which a lot of employers started asking for to review a list of professional connections. Completing employment application form is also very important. A lot of times you might end up just copying information from your resume into employment application form, 
but very frequently this form contains additional questions, which might require your professional judgment. You would need to have access to professional email client and calendar to be able to accept scheduled meetings from employer and respond to employer communication. As you progress as a candidate through the hiring process, you may need to be able to write thank you notes or follow-up notes, as well as respond to the job offer by accepting it or rejecting it, or doing negotiations based on specific terms and conditions. A lot of times you might wonder where and how you can find out who is hiring in your area. Even though there are a lot of different ways to find job leads, they might be categorized in the eight different categories. Number one way to find jobs, at least in IT industry, where I have the most experience, is looking at career websites. If you type information technology jobs in Google, you will see that there are a lot of job engines that present you with the most current opportunities. The most popular ones are Dice.com, Indeed.com, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, and a lot of others. As you might notice, Google also aggregates a lot of job postings and shows them in the top of the search results. LinkedIn is a very popular way to find jobs in today's world. One of the ways to find jobs in LinkedIn is to type the job title and LinkedIn will offer you to search for jobs available in your area. Some of the jobs are promoted and some of the jobs are listed based on employer demand. Another way to find job on LinkedIn is to alert your network. This is why it's so important to have a good network on LinkedIn and build it before you need to get hired. For example, you can change your profile and type in your headline actively looking for business analyst position in Milwaukee area or looking for new opportunities or any other relevant text that might fit your job search goals and objectives. Another popular and important way to find a job is to work with recruiters and staffing companies in your area. Recruiters are typically get hired by employer to find candidates with the required skills. You can search for available recruitment companies or staffing agencies or staffing services in your area and contact them directly to see what are the opportunities that they have available. Large metropolitan areas typically have a lot of staffing companies and a lot of times their opportunities may or may not be listed in the online job search websites. So it's always important to consider this opportunity when searching for the job. Another important avenue to search and find jobs is through networking. Searching and finding jobs through networking is typically one of the most misunderstood opportunities in the job search. Networking is not about using other people or aggressively promoting yourself. Networking is about helping others, understanding what they're trying to do, establishing trust, demonstrating your skills, and help building relationships to make hiring decision easy. If you are an experienced professional, you typically worked with a lot of people that you can connect with to see if they have any need. If you navigate to my network tab on your LinkedIn profile, you typically can see a lot of people that can help you find the job. When somebody in your network refers you to hiring manager, you might consider writing a letter similar to what you see on the screen to let them know that you might be looking for the job. You might consider sending this letter either through the paper mail or using LinkedIn messaging. When searching job through networking, it's extremely important to understand the need, focus on building relationships, and demonstrating the skills that might be helpful for potential hiring manager. Another spectrum of potential hiring opportunities might be looking not just at the private companies in your area, but also at government jobs. For example, if you type in Google search government jobs, you will see government jobs sites and search keywords in your area. There are some websites that specialize in posting government jobs only. And aggregator services like Google and Indeed collect jobs from all the sites and will allow you to filter and search and focus on government jobs only. Another source for job leads, which might be often overlooked, is social media. We've looked at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is used very frequently to search for the jobs. But in addition to LinkedIn, there is also Facebook job board as well as Twitter job board. Obviously, you would need Facebook and Twitter accounts and profiles to take advantage of this offering. 
and once you're inside those ecospheres, you can search using keywords, for example, jobs in Milwaukee, and see all available opportunities and groupings to help you get the leads for potential employment. Classified ads is still a very good source for job leads. A lot of companies continue to post in newspapers and magazines to look for candidates that meet particular criteria. And in addition to paper-based magazines and newspapers, you can also look at Google Job Board as well as Craigslist. For example, when you type particular search keywords in Google search engine, the first job results you see are the ones that presented to you by Google Job Board. And you can click on More Jobs and look at all the jobs available. Look in Google Aggregation Engine. And last but not least, way to find job leads is to look at college and corporate alumni groups. For example, if you are in LinkedIn and search, for example, for UW alumni group, you might see different options available. And if you are an alumni from this educational institution, you might be eligible to join the group and find out about job opportunities in this group. And if you worked at the particular company, you might be able to join alumni group for that particular network. For example, Deloitte alumni group or other companies alumni group might accept you and also provide opportunities and leads in the job market. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.